Hey there, so today we have another video and this is my first uh, video talking about the Mount Cicerone exam. I actually shot a video with a fellow test taker on Udeep right after the exam, but that'll be posted later. That's gonna be a much longer video. This is gonna be a little bit quicker. So um, this is specifically about the advanced testosterone tasting exam, which is separated from the written exam. I already talked about the written exam. This is about the tasting portion. Have to do it in person. Um, so uh, going into the exam, I was not very confident about all flavors. And thankfully, uh, Joshua works for Carbach. Thank you so much for your generosity and everything that you did for us. Um, he brought a bunch of uh, all flavors. So we had five of the advanced testosterone all flavors. and. Unfortunately, um, Anudeep was unable to bring the chlorophenol one from California, but we had five of the six. Um, I was able to detect one of them consistently on day one, and then we did a panel of a bunch of them, and I didn't fare too well. <laughs> I was maybe able to like, you know, find them here and there. T took a little bit of guessing, but I will say, basically, out of in my mind, like looking back at it, out of the twelve all flavors that they could test also on the masters for exam, I am able to consistently, I would say detect seven or eight of them. Let's just say seven, let's just say seven to make it, you know, uh, easy, seven of them, which is scary. Like if you, <laughs> could you imagine walking to a test where you were just only allowed to study seven out of seven out of 12% or seven out of 12 of the content of the exam and the rest you just like could not know. Like you were just in the blind, you've never learned anything about it. You just have no, it, it would literally be like, you know, reading an exam in Greek. So like seven twelfths of the exam, you know, you're, you're for sure seven, of it, seven out of 12 of it could be English. And then five out of 12 is just in a different language where you're just, you're just guessing. And that, that, that feeling is very scary. So walking into the test day, I was um, very scared of that. Um, thankfully, out of the six that they uh, gave me, I was able to get four out of six. I think on any other day, I could have gotten one out of six, two out of six, three out of six. Three out of six, you can still pass. But once you get to one and two, I believe the exam just gets extremely hard to pass. Like you're just setting yourself up for failure because that is a large chunk of your points for the test. And I was able to detect these off flavors. Um, which really scares me because the advanced testosterone, they, 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 they just, these spikes, like for the certified testosterone level, there's like six and then the advanced there's six. I know for a fact with uh, the uh, the level two exam, there's one all flavor I just can't detect, which is DMS. And I've, I've, and I've taken that, like, that's just something I can't detect. And that's happened to some people. Like it's fine that like an all flavor you can't detect five out of six. Like you should be able to consistently, you know, take a tasting exam and be able to pass. But now I'm throwing on more. And then in totality, it's seven out of 12. And just the idea of even like thinking about master is I can't detect these. Like I've tried <laughs> to detect these off flavors. I've done it at Florida Brewers Conference. I've done it like two days, you know, it's, it's just nothing there. Like, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's like, you know, looking through a window and you're able to see like a tree, but then just like, and then just blacking out the room and you're literally pitch black and you can't see anything and you're tr you're supposed to tell me if there's a tree across on the other side of the wall right like it's it, it, it's scary to think about and you're smelling something constantly and over and over and over and you do you know you're smelling it and smelling it and tasting and smelling and there's nothing there there's just nothing there to look for and it's very defeating of a, of a feeling so thankfully that part of the test for a section i actually got so um that, that that's like a huge weight off my shoulders. Just the idea that that portion of the all flavors, I was able to get four or six, which is ideally good enough along with the rest of my um, um, test to pass. Uh, next part of test is actually what I do for you guys, which is uh, tasty descriptors. They give you a beer, three beers, blind. They don't say what beer it is. And then you have to write uh, five um, commercial uh, tasty exam, uh, uh, um, kind of like descriptors, right? commercial descriptors, which is literally what I would do with, on the channel. I have like 3,100 videos for you guys. So I'm very confident in that. And it's like, you know, you get a beer and like you write like, you know, um, <laughs> ripe orange peel and uh, toasted bread crust, you know, like, you know, the things that you, and you write five of them for three beers, which for me is pretty easy, but I think for some people finding those descriptors and finding those adjectives quite hard. I ideally, that should be the strongest portion of my test. Then uh, this keeps going and you do a, an oral exam. So um, my oral exam, I just two. I sat with uh, Neil Witty, Master Sister Neil Witty, which is um, pretty like crazy, you know, sitting with uh, a Master Sister that's going to grade you <laughs> and judge you pretty much. And so, pretty much, you get a plate of food. Um, well, first, you get a plate of food, but then you don't get to eat it first. You, you, he asks you literally oral questions about food and beer pairing. So, you're gonna have to know the interactions between certain flavor compounds or certain flavor compounds and how they interact with beer and blah blah. And then he'll give you this little plate of food that's like, you know, lightly prepared and he'll give you a beer. He's like, hey, this is blah, blah, blah beer. Um, how does it pair? Why? Why does it pair well? What are the interactions that you find? Um, 
uh, how favorably do you rate this pairing? Would you change the pairing? What beer would you change it to? Would you change the the uh, dish? Um, how would you cook with beer in the dish? You know, like th there's 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 many different questions they can go. Um, just going on and on about the interactions between food and beer in general, but also the, the you know this pairing that you have in front of you, and like it really goes on length about more than just simply, hey, how's this pairing? Which is level two. You could write an essay about that, but this is a little bit more in depth. So it really pushes your brain on the food and beer part. Then you get um, the part where it's, uh, you get a style. So this one's a fun one, <laughs> it's a doozy. It's, um, here's a style, tell me all about it, right? So you're, you're basically trying to regurgitate the BJCP, um, trying to use great vocabulary on top of the BJCP, just like, just, just wrote, like try to do it. And for me, I don't think I did great at that. I did not have the BJCP memorized for a bunch of styles, so uh, there's that. And then there's also a beer right in front of you. And now you have to break down the beer. So it's like break down, like break down the, like the style and abstract and then break down this beer, like actually. So like literally me doing a beer, Darwin's beer reviews here is like, on the aroma I get, uh, blah, 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 and then the toasted cup characteristics, uh, you know, um, the carbonation is like, you know, uh, medium minus, uh, stringency, da, 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 like, you know, <laughs> uh, the flavor comes with, you know, dried fruits and um, uh, plums, figs, raisins, you know, like all the, all the stuff that you can say about, um, a beer and then is it like so now you've given like an abstract kind of like hey this is what a beer a style um sh should taste like according to bjcp here's what a beer actually tastes like and you're giving the whole oral exam and then you're supposed to say like hey is does this match like is this the product of style a few other questions as well so pretty intense exam like being able to really just break down a style and it's not one style like it's imagine like it's a whole bjcp G bjcp and there's you know Obviously, they can't test you on every style because that's not available, but there's a lot of stuff you have to remember about styles. And the BJCP, if you ever read it, it's uh, pretty uh, dense and there's a lot of information, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of adjectives, um, a lot of words. <laughs> so, uh, and the, the, the more words you use out of BJCP, the better, more descriptors and the more you're able to talk about like, you know, the amount of like the, the malt flavor in this beer, the yeast flavor in this beer, the, <laughs> the hot flavor in this beer, the bitterness in this beer. And then, you know, how, how strong is it? Is it low? Is it medium minus? Is it medium? Is it medium plus? Is it, is it high? Like, and then just breaking out all that. So it's a, it's a doozy <laughs> and you only get like 10 minutes. So that time just flies. Like, you know, you know boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden it's like, well, that's about right time. And, go, and literally the time got beep, 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 beep. And I was like, holy moly, like the, the time flies on you. Um, so that's two and two. And then we break down into another part of the exam. So this is oh, outside of the commercial descriptors. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the exam. Um, they give you five beers. And then you, you see me do the master system level. <laughs> you're just like, here's a beer. What style do you think it is? That's it. But here, thankfully, with a man says from, they actually give you four options. And you pick out of the four options. So I get five beers, four options for this one, four options for this one, and on and on. Um, that was easy. I mean, like, for me, at least in my opinion, they weren't trying to trip you up, at least for my test. They weren't trying to trip you up on, like, some really minute differences like we tasted through some minute differences that were very 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 annoying um some like some of these belgian beers and some of the german beers like they and, and the american to the you know the american wheat and there's, there's a bunch of styles if you guys really want to ask me i could tell you about like these really tiny nuances between certain styles but then whether they whether you can even find them like and do them blind and figure them out but um, on this one, I think it was very fair. I got five out of five. Uh, funny thing, actually, I mean, you, this is just like me being an idiot. Um, for, you don't get extra points for this one, by the way. I listed, actually wrote down what beer I thought it was. And I got so close. I literally was able to guess the beer's blind four out of five. Like, like not even, like, I had the options, but I also get specifically what commercial example it was. Um, which goes to show you, I think it's a very fair test. Like it, like they, they were, these were obvious spears that they, you know, that were exemplary and, 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 you know, available, um, that like they, you know, they didn't pick a beer out of left field that like, you know, I've had this once in 10 years, right? It's, it's these like consistent beers are like, you should know that, like you have to know this specific commercial example for this style. And like, you know, so I'll be able to get that very good. And then the last part of the test is also extremely, extremely hard. Um, basically you get two essays. Um, they give you a beer and they give you a beer and you're supposed to, you get seven and a half minutes and guys, I don't know if you've ever tried to, uh, uh how much you can write in, in seven and a half minutes, but it's not a lot, <laughs> um, about the beer and, um, and all the like descriptors of it, but also like 
sort of like, you know, what I did for the oral exam, like BJCP is just talking about like, hey, this is what I think the malt is, um, what it tastes like this, and then the carbonation level, and the, well, this is what it looks like, blah, blah, blah. but they also want to give you, uh, make you give them all the um, compounds, you know, so you're going to have to write down stuff like isolamyl acetate, isobutyraldehyde, uh, forfine of wild call, ethyl it, 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 boom, 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 <laughs> like <laughs> all these compounds that like really make it technical. So this is technical descriptors, uh, or te technical descriptors part of the, uh, as part of an essay. And that's hard. I mean, you, you imagine how much can you write in, <laughs> uh, you get one page and that's about as much as you write. And, and the thing is you can write more. You could always write more. You can, I could always give you more details about the malt on this one and the aroma and give you more, but, but you only have so much time. So that, that, that one part of the test, in my opinion, is the most time crunchy part of the test. Like you, they purposely don't give you enough time. I would argue a fair amount of time with like 10 minutes or maybe 12 or 10 minutes probably. But they just, there's just not enough time. And you just have to like keep writing and just write as much as you can, as descriptive as you can, and as technical and as detailed as you can. And that can be very hard because the beers are blind. Like you could be writing an essay about an American light lager, but it's really a pilsner. And now you've now you've separated yourself. Now now you now now you're describing something that the beer is not, and you're putting yourself down in a rabbit hole where you're like, uh oh, right. Um, which is very scary. Like you, you can lead yourself into thinking beer is something and write describe uh, you know describe it well but that's not actually what the beer is <laughs> right like it's it's like imagine like you know you smell you smell the a cat and you're writing an essay about a cat but really you smell the dog and that's and they're looking for an essay about a dog and you've written an essay about a cat so now that now, now like what does that do right <laughs> you, here's a dog but you wrote an essay about a cat they're not i mean they're not going to give you full points right so thankfully there's always partial credit all that good stuff um i think i did pretty well on that section there's there's an off flavor I did not pick up on, so that's um, a little concerning, but um, it is what it is. So walking out of the test, uh, they also tell you which off flavors you got. So I got four to six, that's how I know. Um, I got five out of five on my styles because they revealed that information afterwards. Um, they also revealed what beers I got on the technical descriptor. So they revealed the three beers and I thought I did a pretty good job. Like for at least two of them, I was like spot on. I knew, I, I, I got very close. <laughs> well, I, I, I knew one of the beers, like that's that style of beer. The other one was a little funky and, you know, a little harder to figure out. And then one of them was a very strange beer. It was like a spice. I think about it. It's like an elevated alcohol, like, deep, like light, uh, deep, is a deep gold, <laughs> elevated alcohol, spiced fruit beer. A lot of things you could, you know, you can put yourself in a whole different universe and write really terrible descriptors. But I think I locked on really close. I got very, very good. Um, yeah, that one I'm very impressed at. Like I could never, I've actually never had that beer before, but then when they revealed it, I was like, holy smokes, I was so close. Cause again, I was able to name the fruit, and the spice, and, you know, like it, I think I did a great job. So, and honey too, and honey too. Wow. And I got the honey too. Wow. Really fun. Really fun. I think I destroyed that part of the test. Um, so again, I got about three more weeks to find out the results, I think fingers crossed. And, um, I'm very excited. Um, what comes, what comes, but uh, it's really fun to be over that test. Thankfully, it goes by pretty quickly because you're talking about 15, uh, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes exam, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Obviously, there's breaks and, you know, you have to wait while they do give other people oral exams and stuff like that. But um, it goes by pretty quickly. But again, by the end of it, you don't want to think about beer or talk about beer at all. So the idea that you could do a six hour written exam plus that tasting portion for a test is unbelievable to the people that took that kudos to you but um yeah really cool so that's sort of my initial picture oh by the way you guys were probably have some questions about like what it was like so um first off the the, the, the test was split, split into uh two sections like two proctor section sessions i took it with three other guys i think i think in the afternoon they only had four of the guys so it was like four and four so they literally had a van cicerone and a master cicerone fly all the way <laughs> to texas just to test um eight people absolutely crazy shout out to jen blair as well who's a part of false bottom girls i highly recommend that podcast it's with two advanced cicerones um two people that have taken the master cicerone exam she's one of the proctors for the test um awesome podcast if you're looking for education probably one of the best education pot uh you know cicerone level ish kind of like education beer podcast i can uh recommend out there um oh the other cool thing is that uh this was um done at andrews yeah andrews is serving company so like despite like the distribution tiers and stuff, Andrews Distributor Company is the Miller house of Texas. Texas is like, you know, pretty weird like that, but we have it in Florida too. Um, so this distributor distributes Miller and it's a huge warehouse. And you're like, not quite sure you think it's a warehouse. It's like, oh, just like, you know, pallets and 
you know, cans of beer and whatever. This this facility was so nice. Like it was the cleanest, most like high tech bathroom I've ever been. Like they had the the the, 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 the like big stalls and then the paintings and then the the the, the, the trash can would open up on itself and the carpet and then the conference rooms and the high ceilings, and the architecture and this huge, we, we, we basically took um, the test in like a convention center, but it's like the nicest hotel convention center you've ever seen. And it even had like a, a tap system in the convention center. Like th this, you, you'd think you were in like, like a very fancy, fancy restaurant like, or uh, sorry, very, very fancy, like hotel, like, like really expensive. Like the, the, this was an insane space. So I guess, Distribu distribution of beer really pays the bills and this building was immaculate like you know there's a front desk and then you get buzzed in and there's a gate to even park there and it's it's, it's it's and then even the rooms for the conference and there's mics and the cameras it's it's, it's yeah it, it you think we're in the, like a super fancy hotel so uh, shout out to andrew's distributing for having such a nice facility so um sort of my initial take on the test in three weeks i'll find it, uh out the exam for you guys i told you guys to do a shorter video but it was really not that short apologies until next time cheers